So this video will cover the Unit 2 um, Physiology and Health, particularly Reproductive System section of um, the Higher Human Course. And this is mainly going to cover the female hormonal control of menstrual cycle. So what you'll need to know is that there's two phases to the menstrual cycle in females. So this first phase will be the follicular phase, which will last from day 1 to day 14. Now that follicular phase begins with the process of menstruation. So menstruation is the shedding of the endometrium lining and it is lost out of the vagina. So that endometrium is the lining of the woman. It's where the um, embryo following fertilization will implant. So in terms of female hormones that you'll need to know, Remember them with a wee acronym called FLOP. Now F is for FSH, L is for LH, O is for oestrogen, and P is for progesterone. Now two of these hormones, FSH and LH, are produced by the pituitary gland in the base of the brain, and the other two are produced in the ovaries and by particular structures in the ovaries. So before I continue, if you haven't watched the very first video about the overview um, of the female reproductive system and then the second video about the overview of hormonal control of menstrual cycle, um, I'd suggest you go back and have a look at that. So this here, the structure above the pituitary gland is the hypothalamus and that will produce a releaser hormone which will trigger the pituitary gland to produce particular hormones. So the hormones the pituitary gland produces, like I've said, are FSH and LH. So I've got the descriptions of this process um, written down. So I'll just expose it as I go through it. So FSH is the first hormone that's produced, and it's produced by the pituitary gland. So FSH will go from the pituitary gland and travel in the blood and will target the follicle that surrounds the ovum and the developing ovum. So this line here then is FSH. Okay, so on the description, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone produced by the pituitary gland and travels in the blood to act on the ovaries, specifically the follicle. Okay, now that follicle will then produce another hormone and that hormone is estrogen. So the follicle then will grow and develop and it will uh, produce oestrogen. Okay, so I'm going to underline them with the colours I'm going to use just to keep them separate. So oestrogen will be produced by the follicle and then will target two areas of the female reproductive system. So it will target the endometrium, which is the lining of the womb, and it will target that to allow it to proliferate, which is to grow and develop. Okay, so it causes the proliferation or the growth of the endometrium. Now, the bigger that endometrium gets, the more it grows and the thicker it is, the more likely it is that implantation can occur because it's got a place for it to go. Now, as well as that, the follicle produces oestrogen, which will then target another area, and that will target the cervix. The cervix is the entrance to the womb, and the cervix produces mucus. So if fertilization is to happen, then sperm have to enter through the cervix and will swim up and through the cervical mucus. So that cervical mucus has to be thin to allow that sperm to go through and enter. So that cervical mucus will um, be thinned by oestrogen. Now, as that follicle grows and develops and becomes larger and the ovum within it grows and develops, it will produce more and more and more oestrogen. So when there is a high concentration, a surge in oestrogen, a big peak in oestrogen, what will happen is it will travel to the pituitary gland. And what that does, and I'll just label this oestrogen, what that does is it causes the pituitary gland to produce the second pituitary hormone. Now that second pituitary hormone is known as LH, luteinizing hormone. So. LH is then produced from that pituitary gland due to a surge in oestrogen. 
So there must be a surge of push in estrogen for then that to cause LH to be released. So LH then will travel from the pituitary gland to the ovary. And what it'll do is it'll then trigger that ovary to release that ovum in a process called ovulation. So LH will travel from the pituitary gland and it'll target the follicle that surrounds that um, mature ovum. And it will tell it to ovulate. So that follicle around about that ovum here has ruptured and that ovum has been released. And that process is known as ovulation. So LH will trigger ovulation. Okay, so that release of ovum from a follicle. And then because of that, ovulation will then cause the body temperature to rise by 0.5 of a degree. So ovulation is the end of the follicular phase. So what I'm going to do now is show you how this looks on a graph with some um, hormones on it. So I'm just going to shove this to the side a little bit and show you these graphs. So this first phase, as we know, is called the follicular phase. Okay, so I'm just going to label it down the bottom here. And it's roughly from day 1 to 14. That's not always the case though. So be aware in terms of diagrams that you're using in questions and homeworks or whatever, the follicular phase can be a bit longer or a bit shorter. So when you see graphs like this, we always have one with pituitary gland hormones on one graph. And then you'll always have the ovarian hormones on the other. So if you remember from before, the pituitary gland hormones are FSH and LH. And the ovarian ones are estrogen and progesterone. So if we think about the first phase, FSH is produced and will increase and increase over the period of time. Now what that FSH does is it targets the follicle in the ovary and it causes it to grow and develop. And therefore that will grow and develop and produce estrogen. So as it gets bigger, more estrogen is produced and then you get a large rise in that estrogen. Now when that estrogen peaks, okay, there's a surge in it, so this is oestrogen here. When there's a surge in oestrogen, it will cause the other pituitary gland hormone to be produced. Okay, so that oestrogen travels to the pituitary gland and it tells it to produce the next hormone, which is LH. So LH stays at really low levels until it's triggered by this peak in oestrogen to then have a large surge. Okay, so as soon as you see a peak in LH, this would be where ovulation occurs. You would also see a peak in body temperature at that point in time. Now, FSH levels then tend to kind of go down a bit, and you won't need to really worry about them anymore. So estrogen levels then begin to drop. And the reason why they drop is because now it is becoming the, um, not the follicular phase anymore, but the luteal phase. And that's where I'm going to put another diagram up and show you. So these days following on from ovulation are known as the luteal phase up until roughly day 28. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring up another diagram which will show you your luteal phase. Okay, so the luteal phase is following ovulation. And therefore that'll be days roughly 14 to day 28. So when the LH has then peaked and triggered ovulation, this ovum is then released from that follicle and it'll begin to travel down the oviduct. And then the idea is then that it would get fertilized. So when the follicle, then this remaining empty follicle, Okay, it has lost its ovum and released it into the oviduct. It becomes a different structure and it becomes something called the corpus luteum. <clears throat>
Now the corpus luteum produces a hormone known as progesterone, which is the other ovarian hormone. And progesterone will do a few things in it. It's a very similar target to the um, estrogen that we talked about before. So the corpus luteum will then target the endometrium, which because of estrogen has then grown and developed, but now because of progesterone, will start to what's called vascularize. So it will cause blood vessels to grow and develop. And the reason that's um, causing those blood vessels to form is because the idea of this is that this female would then become pregnant. So fertilization would happen. And then the fertilized egg cell that would then would divide into an embryo would then implant in this endometrium. So this area here is targeted. Okay. So after ovulation, that empty follicle becomes the corpus luteum and that secretes progesterone, which I've shown here. So this is your progesterone. And that progesterone will then vascularize the endometrium, so it will cause blood vessels to grow and develop, and that will prepare it for that implantation that would hopefully occur if that person is pregnant, okay, if fertilization has occurred. And what it also does is it targets the cervix. So estrogen causes the cervix to um, thin its mucus, because the aim is that sperm would then enter through that cervix and then swim up towards the oviduct. But now this female is pre um, preparing for a pregnancy, she's preparing for implantation and therefore you do not want any more sperm to swim up through that cervix. So what happens is the cervical mucus will thicken and that's the second function of progesterone. Okay. So for that corpus luteum then to be maintained and therefore for progesterone to continue to be produced, you need LH. Okay, or a hormone that the um, implanted embryo, which would be here, okay, would produce. So, if fertilization does not occur, LH drops, so, or the hormone that would um, normally have been produced by the embryo wouldn't be there. So therefore that corpus luteum will degenerate, it will break down. And therefore progesterone levels will drop because that corpus luteum will then break down into much smaller structure and then wait away. Now when progesterone levels drop, you're no longer maintaining this endometrium layer. So the endometrium then begins to break down and then is lost. And that is why menstruation is then triggered. And therefore you then have a new menstrual cycle starting. So then that would begin your follicular phase and it'd be a new menstrual cycle which become D1 of the next follicular phase. Now, if the person is pregnant and implantation does occur, then this embryo will produce a hormone, which will then maintain that pregnancy. Okay. So that LH or that hormone produced by it will then remain and it will stay in the blood and therefore that corpus luteum stays. And because that corpus luteum stays, it produces progesterone, which maintains that endometrium lining. And therefore that person does not menstruate and then they do not lose that endometrium lining. Okay, so as with males, um, females have negative feedback as well. So if that female is pregnant or a fertilization and implantation has occurred, you do not want the pituitary gland to produce any more FSH and LH because you do not want any more follicles to be produced and then ovulated and then another pregnancy potentially could occur. So progesterone and um, estrogen will go to the pituitary gland and will inhibit the pituitary gland. So this would be negative feedback. And when it inhibits the pituitary gland, it will then, or not stop, sorry, but reduce the amount of um, FSH and LH being produced. Okay, so because of that then, if LH and FSH decrease, then no more are no more follicles are stimulated to develop, and no more ovum will mature. Okay, so that prevents more fun, um, follicles from developing, and therefore prevents another pregnancy at the same time as you would originally be pregnant. Okay, so FSH will drop due to estrogen and due to progesterone.
inhibiting that um, that pituitary gland. Right, so what I'm going to do is show you this on a graph now. So this is your luteal phase. So estrogen levels are dropping because that was produced by a follicle which is no longer there. That follicle then has become the corpus luteum. So progesterone levels begin low in the follicular phase, but when the corpus luteum is produced after ovulation, they then increase. Now, if that person um, has fertilization occurring and then implantation occurring, they want to maintain that endometrial layer. So progesterone levels will stay high. So this is if implantation has occurred. Okay, and this would be progesterone. Now if implantation doesn't occur, the corpus luteum isn't maintained and therefore when that corpus luteum breaks away and degenerates, progesterone levels will drop. And when progesterone levels drop, the endometrium then is um, broken down and it degrades and it wears away. So then it's lost. So this is when implantation does not occur. Now if implantation then does not occur and that um, progesterone level drops, that menstruation then is triggered because that endometrium layer is not maintained. And therefore that would be the start of a new phase. So menstruation would begin here. Along from day one to roughly day five to seven. And then the new endometrium lining would then begin to be um, built up and grown by the next set of oestrogen that would then start to develop that. Okay, so that is the whole process of the menstrual cycle. Um, the, you might want to take some screenshots of those step-by-step -step descriptions just to show you what they look like and to, to get them firm in your mind.